episode 108, Smart and Frugal Banking. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And today we are talking all about online banking, how to choose one, difference between accounts, mm. and uh, how a frugal person should view these things. We all need it. Yeah. We all need to bank. We might as well talk about it. It's yeah. going to be better than the insurance episode. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> less controversial. This is less boring, yeah. let's be honest. Uh, so we're going to answer the questions like, is an online bank right for you? Do credits, credit unions live up to the hype? Um, and if you choose multiple accounts, how should you organize your money in them? Hmm. So that's what we're going to cover today. But first, our sponsors. Do it. Uh, our episode today is brought to you by Current. Current is a mobile bank with an awesome user interface, no overdraft fees, and no minimum balance requirements. Its app has a free built-in budgeting tool uh, that gives you purchase notifications and insight to your spending. Premium users can even break up their savings account into different pods, which is super helpful if you're saving for multiple things at once. Mm -hmm. And when you set up direct deposit, you can get paid up to two days early. So if you're looking for another bank account, if today's episode convinces you of that, mm-hmm. uh, to hold your emergency fund or something big you're saving for, then you're definitely going to want to check out Current because we're giving away $10 to the first 10 people who sign up mm. using our co- uh, promo code Frugal Friends for each episode. So we've done it for episodes. That includes this episode, 10 more people. Use this uh, promo code Frugal Friends, all one word. Nice. Also brought to you by being uncomfortable. That feeling of slight awkwardness and uncertainty about what's happening next. Sort of how talking about things I am not an expert on makes me feel. (laughs) Eleanor Roosevelt is quoted to have said, do something every day that scares you. Well, for some of us, that's talking about and or learning about intricate financial details. So you can check that box for the day. Being uncomfortable. It's less scary when you have your friends with you. That's me. Heart. Uh, (laughs) That's so sweet. Thanks for being with me, Jen. Yes. All right. So let's get into today's episode about frugal banking. Do it. So obviously I have bank accounts and checking accounts and savings accounts and all of these things, but I would not consider myself an expert on them. I am learning and I am growing in this and you are my frugal friend who I go to for my answers. Yeah, and I think that's 99% of people. We open up a bank either, even when we're kids and we use the same bank we've used when we opened up one with their parents or when we went to college and we Mm -hmm. opened up a bank account, I'm still using the checking account I opened in college. Yeah. Yeah, and so I have other ones. But yeah, so that's usually how people bank. Mm-hmm. Um, but and and we do no research on what's better banking, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. that's what we're talking about today mm-hmm. is better banking. And we are not financial coaches; we're not certified in that. So this is for entertainment purposes to talk about our story. Uh, certainly, make choices that are wise for you as an individual. Exactly, and some of these do bear some interest, but it's nothing like a retirement account or investment account. So we're not talking about saving for retirement. We are just talking about your day-to-day savings, your sinking funds, Mm -hmm. where your, you know, your debit card, stuff like that. But you don't have to be a financial coach to talk about that anyway. You don't. So lucky for us. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Learning what's illegal and what's not that's so legal. That's it's the same thing. Uh, that's our second <laughs> uh, theme song <laughs> for the show. Learning what's legal and what's illegal. That's the spinoff of the show. <laughs> learning what's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not the hard way either. Just yeah. by doing simple Google search. Yes. 
<laughs> All right. So our first article today is from Credit Karma, and it is how to choose a bank. Yes. Uh, and so any question, any like surface level question that you might have about banking, I love that this article mm-hmm. really went through it. Yes. I love the way that they start out. In choosing a bank that's right for you, you should consider these three things. What's your current financial situation? What are your existing current banking habits? And what do you anticipate your future needs to be? I think those are perfect questions Mm -hmm. to be asking when considering what kind of containers do I want to put my money in? How much money do I have to put in a container? Exactly. That's really a great way to put it (laughs) because it's really just a container. It's like a substitute for your mattress or your freezer. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, my grandmother used to keep her money in her freezer and I used to think it was so genius like oh no one's gonna find my grandmom's money in the freezer and then turns out that's like one of the most common places to hide your money yeah at least my grandfather never found it (laughs) he didn't know yeah all right (laughs) don't put it in the freezer put it here don't put it in the freezer put it in one of these three places yes um either a traditional bank brick and mortar an online bank or a credit union. Mm. And hopefully you've heard all of these three things before. And all of them serve their purpose. Like, we're not against traditional banks. They serve their purpose and they're yeah. good. I have, I use all three of these. Yeah. Um, and, and you can still have a minimalist financial picture mm-hmm. and use all three. Uh, it's just the way in which you use it. You want to organize it well. Mm-hmm. So... Traditional banks, um, they're great for, they offer a lot of financial products. They've got, most of them have long histories. Uh, They have tellers either in person or on screens where you can deposit money. Cash um, is a big reason to have a traditional bank and um, and ATMs available locally. Mm -hmm. So great reason to use traditional banks. Online banks offer uh, are starting to offer a lot of the same products available in traditional banks Mm -hmm. um, but they'll have few or no branches so um, not as easy to deposit cash if you get paid that way Um, but still they offer free ATMs Um, not every ATM will be free but tens of thousands of them Mm -hmm. um, across the country some even offer free ATMs internationally Um, so and they'll often offer high yield savings accounts even high yield checking accounts Mm -hmm. kind of like empower so the um, incentive there is really great online Mm -hmm. interface mobile apps and the interest you get yeah and then finally credit unions um, these are nonprofit, member-owned organizations. Um, their financial products are also extensive, just like a traditional bank. Still have um, branches locally. They invest back into the community. Um, they are not as community invested as they have been in previous decades. Mm-hmm. Um, it's. I wish that I saw credit unions taking more advantage of everything they could offer to mm-hmm. a community. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the one. You want to see more gardens? I, I want to see more gardens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I want to see um, see more of that. But yeah. I also um, have a credit union, and it is where I would go for an auto loan or a home mortgage or mm-hmm. anything um, big like that. Okay. Um, so they offer better rates. Uh, you can get to know the people more intimately uh, and sometimes negotiate better. That's not as common, but can happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just a better place if you're invested locally um, or if you're, that's where your heart is mm-hmm. to, to keep more of your money there, keep bigger balances. Yeah. Okay. So those are the three different types. Mm-hmm. Now, another thing that you want to be sure is that whoever you bank with is FDIC or NCUA insured. And those acronyms, the first one stands for Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. The second one stands for National Credit Union Administration. Basically, these are backers 
to ensure your money so that if the financial institute fails, your money is still covered up to, usually this website says $250,000. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, you work hard for your money. Make sure that you, you put it in a container that's going to protect it and has insurance for it. Yeah, and this is something, this is a detail a lot of people will gloss over when they're looking at a bank, but it's important to point out that your bank account has FDIC insurance. Yeah. They all should, um, because if it doesn't, then it's not a savings account per se. It's not a checking account. Mm-hmm. It's an investment account. Mm-hmm. Investment accounts are not FDIC insured. Mm-hmm. You can lose the money that you put in. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's important to identify any time that you are not putting your money in something that's um, FDIC insured, you are at risk to losing it. Most of the time it's rare that you would lose mm-hmm. it, um, but you just want to be aware, especially if you're putting that money in for a short amount of time, like if you're saving for a down payment or a sinking fund, you you want your money into a checking or savings account versus an investment account. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yes. Really good um, distinction there because there are accounts like that, that yeah. your investment accounts are not going to be yeah. FDIC. And insured. we'll talk about some safer investment accounts that you can use for savings later in the show, mm-hmm. um, but... You just want to be aware of that. Yeah. Um, another word. another thing to look at is the product and service offerings. So if you know you want to be purchasing a home soon, it might be in your best interest to choose a bank that offers mortgages, mm-hmm. especially one that offers mortgages at great rates. Um, so look at the rates in your area, find out who has the best ones, and you can choose to bank off of that um, because having a good track record, um, especially with credit unions, um, can improve your chance of getting a better rate in the mm-hmm. future. So don't just think don't just think about mortgages when it's time to get one. You can start thinking about that now even if it's not on your radar, mm-hmm. just in the way that you bank. Mm-hmm. You also want to pay attention to interest rates. So for two reasons, one, that you're paying less interest on loans if you utilize your bank for that, like a mortgage or other types of loans that you might take out of your financial institution, but also interest rates for your own earning on the money that you put into these accounts. Uh, So when it comes to savings accounts, you know, APY stands for annual percentage yield. Um, and so you want to you want to pay attention because different banks will offer different APY rates, um, and and also pay attention to minimums because sometimes it might have a really high interest rate uh, of earning on your money, but you might need like a minimum balance of ten thousand dollars. So, yeah, important aspects to pay attention to. Right, and they'll always put the highest number in the advertising, uh, and then put the minimum balance in the fine print. Um, So the next thing you want to look at, and this is important for frugal people especially, Mm -hmm. is are the account and service fees. Mm -hmm. Um, There are a lot of fee-free banks uh, in 2020. They are not uncommon. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, no minimum balance, no overdraft fees. um, You don't have to have a direct deposit set up. So like this is something that you can find. So make sure when you are doing your banking, that you're, if that's something that's important to you or if that's something you wish you had, you look at what, at what your bank is offering and see if, mm-hmm. if you need to leave. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that we, uh, Travis has a job that offers direct deposit. Yeah. I am self-employed and I do not. So to have a checking account that's only free if you connect a direct deposit um, would not be mm-hmm. good for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also set up a, an automatic bill pay from something usually to get the dir- the, the fee waived. But look at the stipulations mm-hmm. too because you might have a direct deposit now, but if maybe down the line you want to be self-employed, mm-hmm. you don't want to have to be stuck with that and trying to find a new bank, you know, based on, those based on that. Yeah. Um, so... Other fees you want to look at monthly, the ma- monthly maintenance fees, the overdraft fees, those are the big ones. Statement fees, stop payment fees, mm-hmm. return check fees, 
These are all things you don't think about yeah. um, while you're opening an account, yeah. but somewhere down the line, one time it's going to happen. And just to not have to call and get the fee reversed yeah. is going to be a, a great yeah. time saver and worth it. Uh, wire transfer fees, um, cashier's check fees, mm -hmm. money order fees. Mm -hmm. So finding a bank that you like that has um, is fee free mm -hmm. enough for you. Mm -hmm. um, you may not care if they ha you know, have a wire transfer fee because you don't plan on doing wire transfers. That's fine. Right. right. Um, but just, just check to see what the stipulations are in fees. Mm -hmm. Yep. The other thing to consider is location, location, location. We're not talking about house buying, but similar concept with branch and ATM locations. As in, do you need to get to the bank often and is there a branch near your home mm -hmm. or an ATM near your home? And do they charge you a fee to use another bank's ATM or just ATMs at the stores that you're shopping at in, in addition to the, R, to the ATM fee already? Uh, if you need to be going to the ATM often, or do you have ones that are close to you? So these are just other considerations um, along with what bank you want because convenience is a big deal yeah. when it comes to banking. I yeah, think. especially with a traditional bank. You don't mm -hmm. want to use a traditional bank for its ATMs and its locations. Yeah. And then you're using them for so many years and banks are now closing branches. Mm -hmm. And one day you wake up and the closest branch to you is 30 minutes away. Yeah. So it's it's time to reevaluate and make sure the bank that you're using is near where you live yeah. now. This is one of the biggest reasons that Eric and I are moving from our brick and mortar local bank to an online banking option because getting to the bank is not feasible. And our local bank, you can only do up to, I think, a $400 deposit through a mobile app. Whereas usually with online banks, it's much higher than mm -hmm. that and there's other perks. So yeah, it sounds silly, but the location piece and, and the decreased amount of ATMs that don't charge fees, it's like, okay, let's, yeah. let's switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all banks have a place. I think it's just a matter of every few years mm -hmm. kind of reevaluating where you're banking. If you need to close any accounts um, and if you need to open more, where to open them. Yeah. So that is our first article uh, our second article is from the balance and mm -hmm. it is the best no fee checking accounts of 2020 so we just wanted to prove to you that there are purely no fee checking accounts out there mm -hmm. um, and obviously all this information is up to date as of march 2020 so we can't guarantee that when you listen to this it'll be the same numbers and mm -hmm. same rules but, but there um, will be more articles out there like this article. Yes. <laughs> Simple Google search will give yeah. you all the updated info. And these banks that we're mentioning, uh, we don't have a financial relationship with any of them. They do not compensate us if you sign up. Um, but they have been around for a long time and we use them. And I, I trust mm -hmm. years down the road, they will still be trustworthy. Yeah. So for starters, I love what they talk about as far as what... It, what um, sets a good checking account apart and that includes minimal fees or no fees am i right mm. deposit insurance easy access to cash am i right mobile deposit yeah convenience mm -hmm. am i right and online bill pay convenience <laughs> right am i right <laughs> okay <laughs> sorry yes that was annoying five different things that I would also agree are really at least important to me. Now, everybody's priorities, even in the midst of that, would be different. Mm -hmm. But I think those are some really good standards for what to be looking in a checking account. Yeah. And we go, I think we can go on autopilot. I keep like saying this over and over because it's something that so many people I talk to deal with. Like we mm -hmm. go on autopilot with our bank accounts and then we realize one mm -hmm. day, I can only deposit $400 mobily yeah. and I have to now drive 30 minutes to the bank, but I'm just, I don't know how and to transfer my money. And they're closed at 3.30 yeah. on a Monday, yeah. like nobody else in the world ha has hours yeah. like that. And so, but you, but we don't know how, you don't know how to transfer your money or if it's safe or where to do it. Yeah. Um, it is super easy to open one of these checking accounts um, or savings accounts. And... 
you can transfer your money online right from the new account. Um, it's super easy. It does not affect your credit. Mm -hmm. And then you can reap the benefits of whatever bank you're choosing. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid if it's time, if you find that it's time for you to switch banks or open a new one, then don't be afraid of the complications that are involved with it mm -hmm. because it's fairly simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could do it in the weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so the first one that they say um, is Ally, and it's their best overall. I tend to agree. I use Ally. Um, they're high yield savings and checking. Mm -hmm. um, I have I love Ally. Their APY is across the board. So for for their savings, so it may not be the highest on somebody's like best list mm. um, but you don't have to have a minimum ten thousand dollar balance to get their best APY. <laughs> well, what? yeah um, and it is truly fee free i do not have a direct deposit set up from there i do not have an automatic billing set up mm -hmm. for there those were two things that were very important to me because i use it as an extra mm -hmm. um, account um, mostly just for like business stuff mm -hmm. uh, so those were things that are really important to me and they're two things that ally offers yeah the next one is Discover. So Discover actually has a checking account and you can earn cash back rewards when you spend with their debit card, which is really interesting. Cause I, mm -hmm. I even remember that we were talking about this when we were with some of the Dave Ramsey people. I'm like, oh, that's the one thing that I really like about my credit card is some of the rewards. So it's really neat to see for those who are avoiding credit cards that there are debit cards out there offering you rewards based mm -hmm. on your spending with a debit card. So you can earn 1% cash back on certain purchases of up to $3,000 per month with a maximum re reward of $30 per month, $360 per year. That's currently, right? We're talking about this March 2020. Yeah. Um, but an example of, of a debit card and a checking account that would offer you some, some cash back. Mm -hmm. Radius Bank also does um, mm. a rewards checking. Nice. Um, and, and one yeah, 1%. I'll list that in our show notes. Nice. Um, so the next one is Simple Bank. And I think this was this was one of the first online banks that actually gained traction. Mm. Uh, and Simple has developed this really great app for budgeting and managing your money that you can mm. only use if you are um, a customer of Simple Bank. Uh, and yeah, so they help you track your spending and, and all this stuff is free. So I, I really like Simple. I do not personally use them, but I've just always admired the technology. Like you can set up a, a safe to spend um, like bracket of, of your money. Yeah, so it's they have some cool tools set up with that bank. Nice, okay. Then we've also got Schwab. So Schwab offers at this point in time unlimited rebates on ATM fees. So if you withdraw money anywhere in the world, uh, mm -hmm. When making a cash withdrawal, they'll, they'll give you your money back, rebate it. Yeah. Uh, and then they have a high-yield investor checking account. It is FDIC insured with no monthly fees, no minimum balance, online bill pay, all these things. Again, just another example of no fees. Mm -hmm. some, some of these really awesome checking account options. Yeah. And online, which is great. Yeah. We actually went to, um, to Bali a few years ago and we opened this um, high yield investor checking account yeah, I remember that and it was because there was you could get money out at any ATM internationally mm -hmm. for free mm -hmm. and we also didn't want to go over there with our regular debit card in case it was stolen or lost so there was just we maybe put like a thousand dollars on this one card and it did end up getting stolen like yeah no oh, yeah I didn't hear that part yeah so there Whoa. was by the time it was stolen there wasn't much money left on it and we just really quickly went into our phones and transferred it back oh my um, goodness to our account but yeah so that's crazy because I'm yeah. sitting here thinking like that's so extra that's so next level and, then, and uh, yeah you needed it yeah so <laughs> um, so and and we were able to to really quickly rectify that so if we we no longer use it but if we traveled internationally frequently it is definitely a card and an account i would keep around for that reason yeah yeah wow yeah you know what else i like to keep around for many for reasons. many reasons 
the bill of the week. minute of your entire week maybe a baby was born and his name is william maybe you paid off your mortgage maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore duck bills buffalo bills bill clinton this is the bill of the week hey jen and jill it's your longtime fan and listener jocelyn i wanted to send in not just my favorite Bill of the Week, but my favorite actor named Bill who plays an American president in a movie. So that would be none other than Bill Pullman in the amazing blockbuster movie of 1996, Independence Day. Now you might say there can't be too many Bills that have played the president of the United States in a movie, but you'll also remember that there was Billy Bob Thornton in uh, Love Actually, where he plays the super sleazy, creepy U.S. president. Anyway, I want to thank you guys, too, for giving me a shout-out on the Leap Day episode. I really love the community. And speaking of Independence Day, still super stoked that my Independence Day came a couple weeks ago. Not on July 4th, but the day I finally paid off over $100,000 of student loans. Woohoo! Anyway, <sighs> keep up the good work. I'll be listening every Friday. Thanks, and I love you all. Oh, Jocelyn. Wow, Jocelyn. That was my favorite <laughs> bill of the week in a very long time. Yes. I, I can't do bills playing presidents. Yes. And hasn't didn't Bill Murray play a president? I'm looking it know. up. Hyde Park. Was that about a president? I don't know. I'm looking it up. But nobody's called in with Bill Murray. I'm highly disappointed by that. Not that I can remember. Um, yeah. I mean, <sighs> Jocelyn, you paid off over a hundred thousand dollars worth of student loans. We can't Amazing. gloss over that either. Amazing. Um, I you have so many great bills right now <laughs> that was a roller coaster of that was bills, a roller coaster actually like me, every single one and if you're watching us on youtube like you saw our faces just get like mm. oh my word mm. another liar another mm. liar another liar oh, this is amazing I and can't. then debt payoff and just bill yeah oh my gosh um thank you jocelyn thank you if you have any bills that have played presidents or other <laughs> characters in your favorite tv shows and movies yeah. I was reflecting this weekend on my favorite Bill, Bill Curtis, the announcer on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. <laughs> um, I Well, the scorekeeper. Yes. I, love, I love him all the time and his Bill puns. <laughs> every week he has a new like, pun. Bill pun. Yeah, a new Bill pun. Uh, so if you've got anything, even a Bill pun, if you have a Bill pun and mm. you want that to be your Bill of the Week, huh. please send it. Okay. We're here. Yeah. And I'd we're going to read it. I'd be curious to what to that is. We're not going to read it. We're going to hear it. So send it into <laughs> frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill. Um, and, or you can just practice as many times as you want with a voice memo on your phone and just email it to us. Yeah. Frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. We don't care mm -hmm. how we get it. Mm -hmm. Just that you send it. Just that we get it. Okay. Now it's time for the lightning round. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what um, was that not air guitar that... that's what you were thinking it was you'd be wrong it's cello clearly <laughs> it was air cello yes which <laughs> happens always when there's lightning yeah uh so we are going to get a little outside of the box on the mm. lightning round today mm. and think about ways that you can save your money um, or spend it, whatever. Uh -huh. Just accounts that you can have that are not saving or checking accounts. Yes. You need your savings and your checking accounts. Usually you will need more than one each. 
I know that I have my regular spending account and our sinking fund mm-hmm. account. And then I also have my emergency fund at a different bank. Mm-hmm. And then I do checking and saving at a totally different bank for my business. Mm-hmm. It's like a game of chess right. for you. Over right. Here. Uh-huh. And so then I have a few other accounts <laughs> that are just for funsies. <laughs> You just have containers everywhere. You're just like a little leprechaun putting your gold in like different green buckets. Yeah, but these are for, so these are the funsies accounts that you can go. They are not necessarily for investing for retirement. Um, They're just for funsies. (laughs) (laughs) Is that like a combination of the word fun and onesie? It's just a, it's just a play on funsy. Fun. Fun. Funzy. Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> <laughs> You've been putting Kai in a lot of onesies lately, so I yeah. thought maybe. And they are fun. They are fun. They are fun. It's a funzy. Yeah. So the first one that I use um, are bonds. And <laughs> this was just something I started recently um, because I was looking at ways to invest more sustainably. Um, so I'm, hmm. I'm trying to... Uh, divest partially from like fossil fuels and and stuff like that um like i'm not going 100 percent, but i'm just looking to Mm -hmm. experiment with other ways to put my money in um so i found this company called worthy bonds and i've seen them at fincon which is a financial media conference for several years but they always seemed weird to me because Mm. it's bonds and investing is uncomfortable uh, unless you're doing it for retirement and then it's necessary. But outside of that, it's kind of like scary. Mm-hmm. And it's not FDIC insured. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, I don't want to put too much money in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I got a email recently in, so in February when we had that stock market dip. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to call it a dip because it will go back up. Uh, I got an email from Worthy and mm-hmm. they are not, they're bonds are um, tied to local business loans. Oh. So they fund local businesses. They are not part of the stock market. Oh. And so we got an email, people who have these bonds, and saying, like, the reason you didn't see a dip in your savings is because we are not tied to the stock market. Oh. Uh, so these bonds pay a 5% return. Mm-hmm. And so what I did is I just put five grand in there I put part of our emergency fund. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't plan on touching that, so it can be Mm long-term. And then just set it up to reinvest the dividends. Mm -hmm. So I don't put any money into it. Um, I'm just reinvesting dividends. And every few weeks, I get a a reinvestment email because the bonds are $10 each. Uh, So that was something really cool for me to realize the advantages Mm -hmm. of saving uh, diversifying where yeah. you save. Yeah. Um, so it's not FDIC insured, so I could theoretically lose my investment and my uh, interest growth, but it's also not tied to the stock market. So there would have to be a big um, reason why. So I don't know a lot about um, real estate crowdfunding or peer-to-peer lending, uh, so I'm not comfortable putting my money in there yet. Mm-hmm. But... We know bonds, bonds are in your 401k, probably in your Roth IRA, they're there. Mm -hmm. Um, So I feel better knowing that this is kind of like a low, you know, higher yield than a savings account, lower yield than an investment account, and it's going to fund uh, small business, Mm -hmm. you know, like it's investing in Main Street instead of Wall Street. Mm -hmm. So I feel really good about that, good enough to take this tiny risk Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so you if actually you want to go um invest in some worthy bonds if you put a hundred dollars into worthy so that's 10 bonds um you'll get a free bond from worthy and so you can do frugalfriendspodcast.com slash worthy and uh and try that out nice okay uh another container for your money could be a taxable account So this is an account that you would put your money in after tax, and then you are later taxed on the gains, what what you earn in interest on that money that you put in. Uh, And the growth is based on the stock market. So there is the risk. It's not FDIC insured, so there is the risk of 
losing even the money that you put into mm-hmm. it. So this is something that you'd want to consider if you can be it in it for the long term, um, where you don't have to take your money out at a certain point where there might be a dip in yeah. the stock market. Uh, if you've listened to the Dave Ramsey show, he often says the way he invests in real estate is by putting is by saving into a mutual fund, and then once he's got enough saved in that mutual fund, then um, he or um, enough of that mutual fund saved, then he'll go out and buy his next real estate. Mm-hmm. What he's doing is he's saving his mutual fund inside of a taxable account. Mm-hmm. That's what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And he will just let that money grow. And I mean, he has enough liquidity that it doesn't matter about the dips in the stock market <laughs> for him. Uh, it, when you're a billionaire. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So that's, uh, if you've heard him say that, that's what he's doing. Uh, he's doing that with yeah. his, uh, with his, you know, payments and you could do the same thing if it's going to take you a while to save a down payment or buying a house isn't on your radar right now Mm -hmm. you can definitely do that in a taxable account yeah vanguard or fidelity could be great places yeah you can consider anywhere Mm -hmm. Uh, another place are cds certificates of deposit you've probably heard cds Uh, they are um, up to you know Five years, start at maybe three months, 18 months, maybe a year, Um, but they go two, three, four. It's just a commitment for a period of time to keep your money with a financial institution. Mm -hmm. And as a reward for that commitment, you can get higher than average APY. Mm -hmm. And normally it's north of 2%. So if you have money that is not your emergency fund, Mm -hmm. but you are not going to spend it in, you know, the next year or two, then a CD definitely could be worth playing around with Mm -hmm. just to open one up and get some, a little extra from Mm -hmm. it than you Mm -hmm. might get in a high yield savings account. Mm -hmm. Uh, Something that some people do is called CD laddering. Mm -hmm. So say that you are, you've got five grand and you want to, play around with that, put it in some CDs, you can get um, a one, two, three, four, and five year CD so that every year a thousand dollars more becomes available to you. Mm -hmm. So you're not tying up all five grand. Mm -hmm. Um, And then if you don't need it, you just reinvest that into another five year Mm -hmm. one. And so that you're doing five year CDs over and over. Um, but you always have like that base thousand dollars that's available to you. Hmm. Um, so that's something fun if you like to nerd out uh, that you could do. That is something yeah. that people do. Yeah, you can just play around with all these containers. Yeah, still it's just around two percent. So it's not like yeah. the five percent you might be getting um, with you know worthy bonds or even in your taxable accounts if you just wanted mm-hmm. to do bonds there. Mm-hmm. Those are about four to five percent too. Um, but those are tied to the stock market. Nice. Okay. But you, I mean, but they're, it's very small. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. 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 Sure. They're very reliable. Bonds are very reliable. Historically. Not a certified financial planner. <laughs> but I can talk about history. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, other option, final option, at least that we're going to talk about here, yeah. is high yield money market accounts. Honestly, this is very similar to a high yield savings account. So if you have one of those, you may not need a money market account. Uh, Currently, which, you know, high yield, again, that's that's referring to the APY. And right now, as of April 2020, we're talking about 2% is what you would earn on that. One and a half to two. Yeah, no more than 2%. One and a half, 1.7%. Probably not two, under if, two. If you see a 2%, check the fine print for the yeah, minimum, minimum balance requirement. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I mean, if for some reason you don't have an online savings account available to you or you find a money market that just like really floats your boat, mm-hmm. do it. I mean, but you don't need both. If you have an, a high yield savings account, don't feel like you need Yeah. A you money don't need market. all of these containers right. just because other nerds are telling you you do. Exactly. So <laughs> pick the ones that are right for you. Yeah. And, and the moral of the story is that there is a place for all of these financial products. They're not here to take advantage mm. of you or confuse you. 
they are here for different reasons. And you just okay. have to, like what Jill said at the very top on our first article, figure out where you're at financially and where you want to go and make your banking fit that. Mm. So, mm. And it requires reevaluating every few years. Good wrap up, Jen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I am pride myself on my wrap ups. Good to have a friend when you're <laughs> uncomfortable. Yes. And a special thanks to our friend Rachel McSpadden, who left us this really great review yes. on iTunes. Mm. She said, Just what I needed. Frugal Friends Podcast is just what I was looking for. Jen and Jill's lightheartedness and good information makes this podcast an easy listen. Mm. Love an easy that's what, listen. That's what we want to be easy. Yeah, easy on your ears. Easy, easy on your emotions. I put on makeup today so I could be easy on the <laughs> eyes. <laughs> yeah. On YouTube. You always easy on the eyes, girl. Mm. Mm. I try. I you have a tall little... glass of water. My <laughs> hair is growing back post childbirth, and then I have these like curly cues that are everywhere. So it's fun. You hair should check out our YouTube good. channel and, and see it for a lot yourself. Of people pay a lot of money for hair growth. Oh. Okay. Also, uh, we want to thank you for leaving these reviews and for sharing us on social media platforms. So here's what you got to do if you want to uh, win a prize. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> share the latest episode and tag us on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, and we'll add you to our monthly drawing, which is a $10 Amazon gift card. Yes. We give away one $10 Amazon gift card for every five reviews or shares that we get. Yes. Tell them more about the reviews, Jen. Well, they don't have to be five stars, but we'd love them to be. And you just have to send them a screenshot to frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com mm -hmm. uh, or tag at frugalfriendspodcast. <laughs> That's dang it. At frugalfriendspodcast. <laughs> Uh, on Facebook or Instagram, yeah. uh, in your feed or your stories or wherever, just the latest episode, and it'll enter you. See you next week. Bye. Hope you win. Yeah. Oh man, I almost started laughing really hard. I mean, I kind of did, but quietly to myself, just imagining you in a field, like a big field, <laughs> like a little leprechaun oh, no. gem. If you're like a field of wildflowers and grass, w putting your gold into buckets, just everywhere, oh, buckets. hidden throughout the field. Tiny buckets. <laughs> Just so the fun. image made me so happy, and then and then I started daydreaming about like ma making a meme or like a little gif of Jen in like a leprechaun uniform. Going so the around. last time we asked somebody to do, I was good. I was like, yeah. you should make a gif of me as a leprechaun. Yeah. Um, but like the last time we asked people to do that, they did it. Yeah, yeah. And they put our what was heads it? The on gazelle. gazelle. Yes. Yeah. They that put was our good. heads on gazelles. That was like over a year ago. So oh, I think that was we're like due. Almost two years ago. We are due for another gif of Leprechaun Jen. And okay. then if it can be made into a video of you putting money into different containers, all the better. <laughs> yeah. Me as a leprechaun. <laughs> Even though this comes out after. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, what a fine. bummer. It's fine. Ugh. But, okay. you know, it'll still be funny. Post it in our frugal friends community. <laughs> yeah. You may or may not win a prize, depending on how much we laugh. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye for real. <laughs>